the Hagia, the mountain backbone of the dry, rocky island of Socotra. It's part of the Republic of Yemen, 300 miles southeast of the Arabian coast in the Indian Ocean. As the sun rises, it reveals a strange landscape, with some of the most unusual trees in the world. Their odd shapes dot the steep slopes. The lumpy adenium tree only produces its lovely pink flowers after the occasional rains. At this season, its local name is Rose of the Desert. The young seedlings only survive the savage dry season by storing moisture in the swollen stem. By the time they grow up, their struggle appears to have become almost human. Baleria aculeata, this tiny tree grows close to the ground as its adaptation to the drought. More familiar are some of Socotra's beautiful flowers. This is the Socotran begonia, which has been used in Europe to breed the popular garden begonia. But the most famous plant on the island must be the dragon's blood tree. From many angles, it looks like a giant mushroom, especially when it seems to be growing straight out of the solid rock. Many of Socotra's 750 native plants are found nowhere else on Earth. A community of species, all with special adaptations to the hot, dry climate. The world's genetic diversity is now a major conservation issue. Socotra's rare plants are a priceless piece of the jigsaw. Among the international agencies that are concerned about biodiversity is a voluntary body, the Worldwide Fund for Nature. The WWF mission includes three things, really. First of all, conservation of biodiversity. Secondly, sustainable use of natural resources. And thirdly, control over wasteful exploitation of resources and pollution. And certainly, in relation to the first two in particular, plant conservation is clearly central. Plants are the backbone of terrestrial ecosystems. They form the structure. They provide the habitats for other species. And many species of animals are dependent on particular plants. So plants are clearly very important for uh, conserving biodiversity. The first scientific expedition to Socotra was by a Scot, Bailey Balfour, in 1880. And since then, only a handful of botanists have been here to make plant collections. In 1992, a joint team was organized by Edinburgh Botanic Garden and the UN Agency for Plant Genetic Resources. There are few roads on the island, and the terrain is difficult. Yet some of the botanists have come back more than once to explore among these dry, rocky hills. I suppose it's just the bizarre nature of the vegetation and the landscape. I mean, there's something fascinating about it. And of course, there's always the chance, the opportunity to find new species, which is, is very nice, and to record, to refine some of the, the plants which were first seen over 100 years ago and haven't been seen since. What percentage? of these plants are only found on Socotra? Well, there are about 750 species recorded from the island, of which over 250 are endemic, that is found only on Socotra. So it's about a third of the species, which is, it, it, it's quite a lot. And that's quite unusual. It's very unusual, yes. Have you any idea why? I suppose because the island's been isolated for a long time. Um, so plants have had a chance to evolve here in, in isolation. And other plants are, are relics of past distributions. The team have come to make collections in various parts of the island and to record plant distributions. But it's the rarities and the new finds that really excite them. This is a number we collected two years ago. Um, and I've tried to name it at Edinburgh and couldn't get a name on it. So seems to be a new species and possibly even a new genus because it, it's quite distinct. 
but we didn't have flowers before, we just had fruits. So this is the first time we've seen it flowering. It's mm. open. Oh, we've got a seedling as well. That's good. There we go. The object is to, to collect dried, pressed, flattened herbarium specimens. These we can take back to our institute and use as duplicates, so we'll leave some with the Yemeni authorities here. We can send some to other botanical institutes for, for verification to experts uh, to check the names. And these, these stand as a permanent record of, of, of the vegetation. The longer we're here, the more we're able to see something different, something new. And we, we have a very specific uh, list of plants we're looking for now. We look, we're checking their distributions, seeing where they are, trying to check whether they're more or less uh, as frequent than they used to be. Um, Do you think there are still discoveries to be made? Yes, I'm sure there are, yes. A small tree, Dirachma Socotrana, is one of the plants on the list of rarities. It was even thought to be extinct. So the team was very pleased to find healthy specimens growing among the rocks high up in the mountains. One thing that makes this species interesting are these white flowers, which have eight white petals, something quite uncommon. One, two, three, four, five, oh, this six, is seven. seven. No, there's, there's... One, two, three, four. There's a That's vestigial, a, uh, no, yeah, vestigial yeah, petal no, in there, you see? Yeah, I know, it's in worlds of four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. worlds of four. It's in worlds of four. At lower altitudes grows another remarkable plant, the cucumber tree. Socotra is the only place where there's a species of cucumber that grows into a tree, and a very strange tree it is too. After the rains, it produces small yellow flowers, and eventually, these small green fruit. They may not taste too good, but they are related to our domestic cucumbers, and the tree is wonderfully adapted to drought, which could be of interest to horticulturalists. To the botanist, the cucumber tree is a curiosity, but not a particularly rare one. What does excite them is finding the seedlings, which have never been seen before. This one is growing in a date palm grove, protected from goats and sheep by the dead leaves around the base of the tree. It's this kind of find that's critical for plant conservation. They'll try and take it back intact to grow in the greenhouse. Understanding the biology of these plants is of particular importance to scientists with an interest in conserving genetic resources. The reason why I'm here is the enormous diversity of plant life here in Socotra uh, in relation to the area and the geographical area in which it finds itself. Uh, a large number of plant species and a large number of endemics. And uh, uh, many of them are of potential agronomic importance. Not so much, perhaps, the, uh, the more famous trees and shrubs uh, of the island, like the cucumber tree and the uh, dragon's blood tree. But there are others which I think are, uh, could be useful for, uh, as fodder shrubs and in reforestation in other parts of the world, particularly some uh, uh, endemic legume shrubs and trees. Well, well it's a leguminous vine. But we haven't seen it before, so it's uh, a new record, at least. Not sure what it is. Socotra's wild fruit trees could also have practical potential. This is the Punica protopunica, which is, uh, we found it in a new area. It's one of the red date book plants on Socotra. It's the wild relative of the pomegranate, the only wild relative of the pomegranate. And it was considered to be very, <coughs> very endangered, in fact but we've now found it on several places on Socotra, and it seems to be in fairly healthy condition. And never many trees, maybe up to 30 trees, but scattered over most of the island. So this is just a, a voucher for, the, for a new area. It's quite a pale colored one. Right. Pomegranates are one of the richest known sources of vitamin C. Perhaps this wild Socotran relative could be used in future to improve the drought resistance of the cultivated variety. Wild fruits are a major source of vitamins to the islanders. One of the commonest is the wild fig, though the tree is a widespread species found in Africa and Arabia, not just in Socotra.
Socotra's endemic trees and plants may seem strange to us, but to the islanders they're a storehouse of natural products, from medicines to insecticides and pigments to poisons. In its season, the bark of the dragon's blood tree is cut, though only small quantities are taken from any one tree. The processing starts with this pounding on a rock. Dragon's blood has been a prized item of trade for thousands of years. The emperors of Byzantium signed their names with it. And when it's heated, the red paste does look like the congealed blood of a monster. After cooling into blocks, dragon's blood is used as a red pigment to decorate pots, as well as for incense, medicine and magic. When grazing is in short supply, local people collect foliage to feed their cows and goats from trees, like the Stakulia. Frankincense trees provide more than this. The foliage is good fodder, but they also produce the aromatic gum mentioned in the Bible, something that's still exported from the island. There are rules for the use of every sort of tree and when to crop the different products from it. The main fuel used is firewood, as in many parts of the world, collecting it is women's work. Only dead branches are gathered. Live trees are never cut down. Local custom forbids it. This argument started over the felling of a large Sisyphus tree. It's not a rare species, but the man still got into trouble with his neighbours for cutting it down without permission. He had a genuine reason. His home had been destroyed in a flood, and he needed a new roof beam. This provoked quite a debate. Finally, he won his point and everybody helped him carry home the heavy log. <laughs> Thanks to their careful management, the Socotran people have lived in balance with their environment for centuries. The botanists have found that the natural vegetation of the island appears to have changed very little in thousands of years. So how endangered are some of the stranger and rarer plants of the island? At the moment, most of them remarkably aren't very endangered. Um, if development happens on the island, it's possible that some of them could be, but a lot of them live on cliffs and in fairly inaccessible places. But nevertheless, it's something that needs keeping an eye on. We're trying to see just how many of the endemics are still here. I mean, a lot of island floras are fairly rich in endemics, but particularly in the dry tropics, it's quite unusual to find just so many of them surviving so little extinction. At the moment, there's possibly one extinction, um, which is, is quite remarkable. Not all the unusual plants and seeds recorded by the field botanists end up as press specimens. Some are sent here to the Yemeni government's plant research station on the mainland near Aden where a project has been started to propagate Socotra's rare plants and even begin to assess them for plant breeding purposes. They've already grown a number of wild pomegranate trees from seed, and in a year or two, some of them may start to produce fruit. The potential of these plants interests plant breeders, agronomists, and conservationists. Now, at some point in um, future human history, human beings are going to have to deal with habitat restoration, recreating a productive planet. At such time, people will want, need, not only want, but need genetic resources. What is needed is multi-species planting, recreating a more complex, more stable, more diverse environment. The strange and remote island of Socotra may still have secrets to reveal. Who knows what other remarkable plants may be hidden here? 
So the search continues. Though the scientists can collect, describe, and even propagate the rare plants, they need local help when it comes to information about their properties and uses, because the people of Socotra have depended on them for centuries. The first steps are now being taken to consult local people in the conservation process. After all, it's their stewardship that has enabled the unique Socotran flora to survive intact. <laughs> <laughs>